Love is kind, doesn't know evil. Love is strong, gives confidence. Hope in hardest moments. Love protects, unifies, removes every fear. It's beautiful, does not contend. Cherish one another, never failing love. God ordained love. Thank you very much for joining us. Whenever you see me seated between this very high voltage, this is Pastor Morris Gasheru and Pastor Pauline Gasheru, my mentors in ministry and my mentors in marriage. They've been holding wonderful, wonderful, wonderful sessions on the marital bliss. And today we are here. We are here to receive it from them. You know, uh, the, the, the knowledge of the Word of God, many years of experience, the grace of God, many years of experience, both in their marriage and in the life of counseling many people on issues of marriage. Remember, this Sunday we are also having uh, a wonderful version of the marital bliss, matters arising, and I'll be in the house. Thank you very much, Pastor Morris and Pastor okay. Colleen, for having me on board, talking about marriage, and the, 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 the relationship between marriage and, and in-laws and mm. friends, you know, mm. and, and, and just people depending on that particular marriage and relating to that particular marriage. Mm. I am, I've been married, we'll be celebrating 16 years this, this uh, 30th of August. And, and, and one thing that has really, we came together with Caro, agreed that... Uh, we will, Caro will not discuss me with her mother. I will not discuss Caro with my mother. <laughs> we will not have anything about our marriage uh, that is very uh, sacred between me and my mother. More than, more than we not, uh, on matters married, I'll not be close to my mother more than I am with Caro. And I think that one has helped us. I know you people have a lot to tell us mm -hmm. about the the issue of marriage and uh, and and in-laws brothers-in-law sisters-in-law mother father-in-law it's a whole group of ecosystem in the normal african setup yeah and you know the bible <clears throat> pastor solomon is uh, is very clear is gives us very intimate relationships that were there in bible days for example if you look at the story of jacob and laban jacob stayed with his in-law his father-in-law for over 14 years meaning <clears throat> he stayed and worked for Leah seven years then worked for rachel and then all the children were born the only child that was not born in that homestead was benjamin the youngest. And then at a time that he really desired after 28 years, I calculated at some point I saw he's almost 28 years. Mm -hmm. After 28 years, living in the house of his father-in-law, taking care of his father-in-law's ship, mm -hmm. you find that th there was a scuffle. There's a, there's a problem now. You get, there was a problem and the problem was that this father was not paying him his wages. Mm. And when they agreed on what he is to be paid, mm. uh, they kept on changing. Then his so, father-in-law, Alim Zohair. Mm, Alim Zohair. Mm. So, but the truth of the matter is, and this is what I learned from that scripture, is that Leah and Rachel continue to honor this man mm. and they continue. To, you don't see a problem in that marriage between Jacob and Rachel. Let me use Rachel because uh, uh, Rachel was actually 
the love of his life. Mm. You, you don't see there being a problem. Mm -hmm. Although, mm. even when they left, they had to sneak out. And they were followed mm. until God had to intervene and tell Laban, mm. don't do anything, good or bad, to Jacob. Mm. Are you getting? Yes. So it, it shows us very clear. So that tells us that whenever people are getting married, <clears throat> That person, one person, the wife, already has the relationships from her nuclear family, mm -hmm. including brothers and sisters, siblings, mm -hmm. to cousins and uncles and people that would influence her life. Mm -hmm. The husband also, the man, mm -hmm. also has a network of relationships. Because by the time they are getting married, they've not been living in a vacuum. They've been living somewhere with certain people who have influenced them or who might continue to influence them. Mm. But now, when they come into this marital union, mm. there are very important adjustments and understanding that needs to dawn. That now, the most important person is your wife. The most important person is your husband. All right, and from that point onwards, you find that, uh, uh, you see, when Jacob left, his wife says, no, 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 we are your wives, we are not remaining, we are going together with the kids. You get, so they left together. Mm -hmm. So, there needs to be an understanding of how to handle those prior relationships of family, that's the ones we're calling in-laws. Mm -hmm. And maybe later we'll talk about friends. Mm -hmm. After somebody has gotten married. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, very well. Pastor Pauline, mm -hmm. uh, you, you take, you do classes for premarital counseling uh, mm -hmm. in the church. You take two groups in a year, preparing them for marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your experience? Uh, my experience is that uh, most, if not taught, might end up getting into trouble. Because, like what Pastor has said, somebody is coming from a different relationship. So I tell them that by the time they are, they are getting married, the man is a stranger to the, wife, to the, to the family of the wife and the wife is a stranger to the family of the husband so how the family of the husband is gonna treat the wife is not necessarily determined by the wife it is determined by the husband how the husband projects the wife whether she's gonna be respected or not is determined by the husband if the husband addresses his family and tells them, you know what, this is a woman that I have chosen to spend the rest of my life with. Mm -hmm. And if you respect me, you also have to respect my wife. That is how your family is going to treat your wife. Because remember, this is your family. These are people that you're familiar with. So you can have dialogue with them. But you see now, when the wife is coming into that family, she, these are strangers, you know. She may, she may not be able to, to, to tell them what she thinks but the husband is in a position to do so. And the same case to the husband. If the husband is going to be respected by the family of the wife, that one is not determined by the husband. That one is determined by the wife. How she presents the husband to her family, that this is a man that you are supposed to respect. If there is anything negative you want to tell me, please keep it to yourself, because this is a path that I have chosen, and I have chosen this path to live with this person. So anything that is negative, please keep that to yourself. Because it's a, it's a journey. Even, even the sisters, the brothers, they're all going to choose different mates in life. So the, the person that they're going to choose is the person they're going to spend the rest of their lives with. So it, it depends on really how the wife and the husband project their wife or husband to their respective families. Because if the wife now begins to talk negatively about the man, that's how the, the, the family is going gonna, is gonna to treat the man. They are not going to respect the man. And the same case, if the, 
If the husband pro, uh, projects the wife as somebody that anyone can talk to, tell her anything, order her around, you know, then that is what is going to happen. So I would say they, they both act as each other's securities, yeah, in their respective families, and they are the ones who define how either is treated by their family. Yeah. There's a, there's a, a unique closeness, we admit. There's a unique closeness between uh, a, a man and his mother, a man and his mother. And I see in the case of, uh, I want you to refer to, 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 the, to in the context of the word of God, because you see, uh, even after Solomon ascended on the throne, uh, that the mother was, you see many kings of Israel, the mothers were very, very pivotal and they, they, had, they were like their, their, their chief advisor, so to speak. And now, taking this one beyond into marriage, it, it can really, the, what are the parameters? What are the, 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 there's got to be the limits, right? What are the, li the, the limits? Minding that a man and his, and his mother are very, very close. And it can go beyond to the extent of, 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 of invading the privacy of a marriage. You see now, there is, um, of course, as you have said, there is this aspect of that this girl, mama's boy. And that closeness, you, is, you, cannot, you cannot wish it away and you cannot ignore it. Because if a man has grown or a woman has raised his kids or her kids to be close to him, then he's done a good job because that's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be that the parents, the children are close to their parents, okay? But now it talks about that understanding that a parent has, that at a particular juncture, this daddy's girl or mama's boy will have to go and start his family. And there is a way as a parent, okay, you would expect them to be close with the wife and to manage their affairs. So this aspect is both from the couple that has gotten married and from the pa parents. Because when you have given your daughter in marriage, yeah, for her to get married, you know from that day Headship has been transferred. There is somebody else now who is the head. There is somebody else now who is the authority. Actually, even the Bible tells us in Numbers mm -hmm. that even if a woman makes a vow, if it's a single woman, the, husband, the father has the right to revise the vow. or to cancel the vow. Mm -hmm. If a woman is married and goes and tells the husband, mm -hmm that she made a vow, the, the husband can cancel the vow. Mm -hmm. Because now of that authority, it tells us, yeah, in the book of Numbers 33, okay, it tells us that it's recognized that a single woman, the authority is the father. A married woman, the authority is the husband. Are you getting? Yes. So, when a, a father hands over the girl, the mm -hmm. daughter, mm -hmm to the guy to get married. Mm -hmm. You know that from that day, this man is now the authority. And you wish to God, he's the right kind of authority. Mm -hmm. Are you getting? Yes. The mother also should understand that from now on, that man is responsible for his wife and his children. Mm -hmm. All right? His priority is his wife and his children. And people, when people understand that, the dynamics are not as bad. They can still continue to be close, but not controlling the marriage, not influencing the marriage. For example, can come and you become close, you talk, general stuff, things, you advise, but not controlling another person's marriage. All right? For example, if a girl comes to the father and says to the father this, it's up to the father to ask, have you talked with your husband? What has your husband said? Yes. Then you don't go contradicting the husband. <laughs> yes. 
Are you getting? Yeah. Because what you are telling the, the daughter mm. is that now your husband is not good enough to make certain decisions. Yes. He's not man enough. Are you getting? And when you do, you do that, you will create a habit. You'll create a dependency. That doesn't mean they don't consult. Yes. All right? Mm. But there are decisions that they themselves have to make. Striking the balance here is... Yeah, is, yeah, is yeah. Right. Boundaries and balance is very important. And that one... Does so well. as a father, you have to know there are things you can't get into. Mm. It does well, Pastor. It does well with, with, with godly parents. Yeah. But now, Pastor Pauline, <laughs> with uh, every other person out there, mm. you know, the, the, the people want to... Mm -hmm. and, and, and as Pastor has talked about control, mm. I don't know, there is a tendency to from parents to, to, to extend a little bit of control even after someone is married. Yep. You know, Pastor, it's assuming, <laughs> is assuming, number one, the wife who has gotten married, mm -hmm. the husband who has married her, mm -hmm. and both their parents. Mm -hmm. Among these, there's got to be one who is mature. <laughs> or one who is... You, you, no, let me not use people. the word mature. Mm -hmm. The one who is... Uh, Consider it, and one who knows mm. that is the one who begins this process. Sometimes yes. it's the wife who can ask the husband, Really, is it right for you to be discussing me mm. with your siblings mm. and discussing decisions we have made? You go change them. Mm. It can be the husband who takes the honors and say, Guys, it's my wife. Mm. Now I'm running, I'm building my home, so it's going to be like this. We are, gonna we are not going to sit down mm. and discuss my wife. Oh, yes. We are not going to sit down and discuss matters in my home that you yourself don't discuss your own matters. Now you, you keep your secret, but you want to table mine. No, no, no. <laughs> are you getting? Yes. So some will have to put the foot down. Mm -hmm. Okay, and as my wife has said, Pastor Pauline, is that somebody as early as possible, mm. I don't think my wife has had issues with her in-laws. And it's because as early as possible, I made it clear. Mm. I made it clear I love my wife. I made it clear my wife is my priority. Mm. I made it clear we are not going to sit here mm. and discuss my wife. Mm. No, 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 no. And Pastor, someone is saying, unajua eh, pastor anasema hivi jie ni pastor. Unajua pastor ni pastor. So, pastor... That Akona, time I wasn't a pastor. They are saying, maybe you are godly. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they are saying you are godly. Many people who watch Marital Bliss, because I also watch it from very far, many people who watch Marital Bliss have lots of issues. Mm. Uh, and, and, and many of them, you know, there is a side that godliness, when I say, hey, pastor, and I talk when the advice come a pastor. But he he kes here to he kes here to sasa. You know, like Pastor Paulina, I would I would want to 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 ask you. Mm. There is a situation, Pastor, whereby uh, the, the 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 kind of support system around the couple, uh, uh, people people raised up. They're raised up by parents. Maybe they are doing business together or they are doing ministry together. You find that the kind of support system and they're doing the trade of the, of the father <laughs> or the trade of the mother. And you find that uh, the mother is very influential when it comes to even uh, 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 financial issues because they do wanafanya biashara pamoja. Now she's married, yes, but they still do either family business or they're connected financially somehow. You find that it brings a lot of conflict because uh, everything has got to be referred to what an iske mama anasemaje ama what an iske baba anasemaje how how would you how would you really advise that because uh, yeah yeah uh, i would say that uh, and I'm, you've made, you have it has brought to my remembrance uh, a, a case that i had of uh, a lady who got married to a daddy a, a mommy's boy yeah a mommy's boy and i think i would start by saying that you see like now when somebody is getting married they always envision the kind of a mate they would desire and uh, you find that even when it comes to some parents they may not speak it out but they also envision the kind of a daughter-in-law that they would have 
And uh, many would want a daughter-in-law who is a yes daughter-in-law. Do we go this direction? Yes. Are you getting me? Mm. Especially those that uh, you would call mamas that control their sons. So uh, uh, there is this uh, case that I had, and uh, there's this lady who got married to a certain guy. Mm. And this guy was a mommy's boy. And the, the mother would come into the kitchen mm. and dictate to the wife, like, I mean, how can you cook this mm. and this for my, for my son? <laughs> this is what my son likes. <laughs> I mean, the woman uh, was controlling the son's home. Literally. And she, no, she would mm. even go to see how his, his clothes have been ironed, you know, I mean everything. It's like she was controlling the house. And it got to a place that the girl couldn't take it anymore because she would criticize the food. Mm -hmm. She would criticize how the, the son is dressed. Mm -hmm. She would criticize everything about the children until the girl couldn't take it anymore. Mm -hmm. So it got to a place that the girl now had to walk away. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the man was not able, like Pastor said, was not able to stand his ground. You see, now the lady here could not stand her, her ground. Yeah, yeah. It was the work of the That's husband right. to stand his ground and tell the mom, you know what, mom? Mm. Now, what I eat right now is my wife's responsibility, whether I like it or I don't. Mm. How I dress now is my wife's responsibility. Mm. But now, in this scenario, I would say that the boy had allowed his mother to control him to such a way, in such a way that now it was no longer the boy now, the mm. man. Mm. Now the mother now started started controlling the family. So I think it just goes down, it boils down to, the, to one thing, mm. the man putting his foot down and telling the mother, I love you, but this is the woman that I've chosen to marry, mm. and this is the one that I choose to spend the rest of my life with, and I don't mind mm. how she is, uh, what she's doing in our home. Mm. But if the man does not put his foot down, yes. the mother will control. So. In a situation where, like I've said, that every mother envisions the kind of a daughter-in-law. If the daughter-in-law comes packaged differently, mm. now that becomes a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> if the daughter-in-law is the one that stands her ground and tells the mother-in-law, yes. with, with all the respect, yes. kindly just give us space. Mm. Now that becomes a problem. Because unconsciously, the mother-in-law would want a daughter that would be reading from the same page yes. with her. Mm. So it becomes a bit of a, a problem. Mm. If she gets a, a daughter-in-law who has a strong personality, not yes. a wicked daughter-in-law, yes. yeah? but a daughter-in-law who knows her position mm. and her place, mm. now that she is, now that she's married, she knows her position, her place. So you find that this brings a bit mm. of conflict mm. because uh, unconsciously, the mother wants to control. But now she finds this, this woman that is saying no. Mm -hmm. So how, where does a woman go? To his son. To, yes. I mean to her son. Yes. And now begins to get to the wife mm -hmm. through the son mm -hmm. who she has raised and who she, they have grown to love each other. Mm -hmm. So it, it can go either way. Yeah. You know, um, Pastor Solomon, the more we have situations the culture of the environment, the generational mm. problems in terms of people who don't understand relationships. Mm. That lack of understanding of what a relationship is, is also exported into marriage. So we are now in a situation mm -hmm. where people don't understand what marriage is about. And that if includes even father and mother-in-law yes. who gave their daughter in marriage mm. and didn't understand what they have actually done. <laughs> what does this mean now? Are you getting? Yeah. So we, we are getting to a place where the lines mm. and I'm the not... definition of what marriage is all about mm. is March. blood. Mm. Mm. So people are in marriage and they don't. And that is why programs like marital bliss are necessary. Mm. Because people actually would think mm. that if you put a gentleman and a girl mm. in a house, mm. they would know how to live together. Mm -hmm. Because they've been write, writing poems, sending flowers, going out. Mm. You'd think that it wouldn't be a problem. Mm. 
But with experience, we have realized it is actually a big issue. It is. There are people who are better when they are dating mm. than when they get married. You get? When they are dating, they relate better than when they now get married. Mm. Because now, when they get married, the woman does, has to submit to the authority mm. of the husband and she doesn't have a clue what that is. Oh, yes. The husband has to life, love the wife mm. as Christ loved the church, and he has no clue what that is. Mm. And that also comes to the in-laws, the ones who are giving in marriage. They also need to understand, by the way, I think there, there needs to be a premarital counseling for parents. <laughs> I think so. You, you get, you said, you know, you are, about to give, you are about to give your daughter, you are about to give your husband. Mm. Are you willing to let them build be. their home? Mm. Because now, those are areas, it might not, of course, there's an the aspect of control, but sometimes it's not control. Sometimes it's insecurity where the, the mother is feeling that uh, 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 she's losing her place. Exactly. Is exactly. it possible for the mother yeah. to have her place and the, and the wife to have her place? It's possible. And, you know, as Pastor Paulina said, it's up to the man to define. He said, mom, your mom. Mm. No, no one will ever be my mom, mm. your mom. Mm. But now this is my wife mm. and the mom of my kids. Mm. Let her make the decisions of our kids, our house. Are you getting? Yes. But now again, she has her example. I have my example. I remember many years ago, there's this guy, a case was, came to me, and is this guy who would uh, leave the office, mm. you know, born town, mm. raised town, mm. leave the office, and he's coming in the evening. Instead of going home for dinner, he first passes through the mother's house, yes. has dinner, yes. <laughs> and then comes to the wife's house and does not eat their wife's food, of course he's full. You understand? And there's a lot of conversation that has gone on, decisions that have been made have already been overturned, mm. <laughs> decisions have been made without the wife knowing. Mm. So he's just coming and say, by the way, discuss with my mom, I'm gonna do this. I'm buying a plot. You mm. discuss with your mom, eh, mm. that you're gonna buy a plot. Eh, Juja. How, yes. I'm gonna get a loan, buy a plot. So the wife feels locked out. Isolated. Uh, are you getting? Yes. So there is that also where it's the guy mm. who doesn't feel like wants to now focus. Mm. You get? Mm. And it's because people feel that when you get so a man gets married, it's like the wife, the mother is losing. Mm. She's supposed to be gaining, not losing. Are you getting? And if you go into marriage like that, that or you, 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 your kids are getting married, but you see like they are, you are losing a daughter, you are losing a son, you are losing finances, you are losing uh, support, yes. then there will always be a problem. You will never allow those people to build yes. their marriage. Pastor, you understand? Yes. Because marriage comes with financial responsibility. Mm. What do you mean? They are having kids, mm. The kids are going to school. Mm. That is a financial responsibility for yes. the man and his wife. Yes. Okay? So some, some people are trying to control that mm. marriage because mm. of finances. Because they want to make sure whatever was coming was coming. And if it's not coming, it's going to her. Mm. And therefore, she's a problem. No, 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 no. Wow. You see, at some time, a man will mature, mm. a girl will mature, and mm. get married and settle down. That's mm. what the Bible says. Mm. A man will live his father and mother, and cleave to his wife. Mm. Pastor, is, is, it, is it important? Is it important for extra caution to be taken? I want to hear your, your opinion, both of you, on this. There are people who are raised by single mothers, yeah. and they are the only child. In that case, they are the girl, or, they are the, or, or is, is a man or, or, or a woman? you find that they shared a lot in terms of, they shared a lot in terms of closeness, they shared a lot even in terms of finances and, and, and financial planning. And at times they even invested together. They have something that, that they will still own together, even post-marriage. So 
does it take extra caution uh, when someone is getting into a marriage uh, and there's so much strings attached? Just besides... Of course. You know, Pastor Solomon, I get your question. Understand this, that all communities, we talk about the Asian communities, a lot of their businesses are transgenerational businesses. They have not been started by the people running them. You get? But they've been run there like that from the days of their grandfathers. Yes. And I can mention names. It's mm. only that I don't want to. Yes. You get? So the ones who are running those family businesses now, is the third generation. You get? Yes. Like, for example, if, if you're working in a company, yes. that doesn't mean that company has to affect your marriage. You get? All you have to do is, if it's a family business, yes, there are rules. If he's a father running the business with the children, there are rules. You are the accountant. You're good in math. You are into marketing. You are into purchases. And you are into this and this. So they have rules. It's not everybody is trying to balance the books and then everybody's, you know, yes. th that now is what becomes a problem. Mm. So question is, if somebody is working for a company, mm. does that company overflow and start to affect their marriage? It is possible for a family business, people to draw the same boundaries. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah, because that, what happens is that they co-own brother, sister, and father, and maybe the mother. Mm -hmm. It's not brother and wife, mm -hmm. and the wife of that man. So the wife is at home doing her own stuff, she's working, she's mm -hmm. doing her own things, mm -hmm. It's me who has a business with my brother and my sister. So the responsibility is me and my brother and my sister and my father to create procedures of running business, right procedures of accountability, procedures of balancing books, purchases, blah, blah, blah. That's the only way you can. But if, you, if the business is run, you are Kali, mm -hmm. It's going to be a problem. Soon you will start to hear the man complaining to the wife. Mm. My money, I put it there, is no longer. My brother is eating. My sister is doing that. Mm. And it shows that there are no systems in that business. You understand? Mm. So in this case, it's the responsibility of the person who is in the business. Mm -hmm. Okay? That is if they are already in the business. Oh, yes. But if they are going to get into the business after they are gotten married, mm -hmm. I think they need to discuss. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, partnerships, business partnerships need to be discussed within the marriage. Oh, yes. Who are the who is this you're going to business with? Because your money is family money. Mm. You understand? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's family money. And therefore, I think that's important. We're going to get back to it, you know, after the break. Okay. We're going to take one minute's break and then we get back. See you after the break. Kindly remember, like, comment, and share. And there are numbers at the bottom of your screen. Please call us. Let's get your opinion. Of course, we cannot thrash everything. <laughs> so we are just going to touch a bit and then you know, maybe next time. God bless you. See you in a minute. Maritopi. Thank you very much for joining us again. This is the Marital Blaze by Pastor Maurice Gasheru and Pastor Pauline Gasheru of Jubilee Christian Church, Baker Road. And uh, we've been talking matters, in-laws, living with in-laws because they have, their, they have their contribution, they have their right place of relationship and they, they, you know, they are, they are a blessing to us. However, as Pastor Morris and Pastor Pauline has been uh, uh, talking to us, is that there's need for defining boundaries. There is need for respecting, uh, uh, respecting boundaries and lines so that marriages are what God meant them to be. Pastor, uh, allow me to ask. I, uh, I bring this question through. Uh, we, I invited my, my brother-in-law who who had a problem with his hands, uh, had to come to, to, to where we live so that he may get the particular papers, uh, particular papers to, 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 for, to be enabled to, to, to get employment. So we stayed together for a while. Uh, but then I realized that with time, uh, 
the respect for me was going down. At times we are, I asked him, please help me uh, do this. We are making the fans. Times he, ta- he sits down and tells me, Leo, mm, me Leo, Leo, Nico, leave. Uh, so I realized that he's still eating in your house. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, Leo, Nico, leave. And at times he would exchange with my my wife. I mean, when I I I, I interpreted that uh, after you've stayed with people for a while, they tend to think ni nyumbani sasa ni kwao na dada yake. And 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 kuna mazoea there are mm. you know and things here and there. I want you to kindly uh, share with us the measures to put in place when it comes to in-law support. Because in-laws must be supported. They support us in many ways and we support them in many ways. However, if this matter is not well managed, then the area, to what extent do we support? How do we support? When do we support? And who uh, can really be an issue? Pastor. Now, you see, um, okay, when I talk to primarital couples, I tell them on the onset, there are certain things that are supposed to be clear. You see, there is a reveal. There is a time of revealing. Are you getting? And one of those is, what is your financial situation? Are you in debt? Are you servicing a loan? Because we have had cases where somebody gets married two, three down the, uh, months down the line, auctioneer set in, and they take everything. And, and the, person is, the other person is, is, is amazed. He didn't know that there was a loan. Are you getting? Mm-hmm. So we, we ask them to, to tell all. Mm-hmm. If, you're, if you've gotten, you know, in every relationship, there's a place called the point of no return. Mm-hmm. This means now you've made up your mind, you have proposed, their proposal has been accepted. Now you have agreed we are going for marriage. We are getting married. Mm-hmm. You've made up your mind, you have started negotiations, dowry negotiations, and stuff like that. So that is the time you start to even tell all. Okay? Yeah. You tell, is, is, does this guy have a kid mm, that this, they are supporting? Disclosure. Disclosure. Mm. That's beautiful. Disclosure. Do you have a kid? Does, does this lady have a kid? If she has a kid... Uh, where is the kid? Is with the mother. Is she going to come and live here? How is it going to be? You get, even today in disclosure, I bring in the issue of exes. You know, you, you, you had an ex, yes. Well, how did you shut it? How did you close that door? How is it? Is it something that, or, you know, is the ex outside the country believing he's going to come back to continue? Yes. You get mm-hmm. So it's, it's just hard to do with all those disclosures. So I tell them, listen, number one, are you servicing alone? Number two, what is your career and financial status, mm. position? Number three, I ask uh, where you are right now. Mm. Uh, are you supporting any of your family? You know, of course, because as the parents are aging, yes. You, you find that once in a while you have to chip in yes. medical, mm. medicine, mm. dialysis, insurance. this and that, mm. medical insurance, whatever. Mm. Okay? What are you doing? How, how is it you relate? I mean, I think it's, it's important for anyone. It's irresponsible for somebody to get married and they have never discussed such. You know? In fact, before people get married, when you have made, you know, the ratio has come the uh, dowry negotiations. Yes. So that means the families have started to come together. Mm. So the guy will tell the lady, you know, I'm going for a family meeting. Mm. Can we go? Mm. But uh, get together. It's in those get-togethers that certain things are discussed mm. and maybe they pass uh, a basket or they mm. pass a uh, hotel mm. and people put a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. What's this? We are building dad a latrine or we are deal, building a cow shed. You know, so by the time the people are getting married, there needs to be some form of awareness. What we're dealing with. Is, you know, and of course, mm. I'm not discounting the fact that there could be emergencies. Mm, yes. The emergencies. There are things that arise after the fact. But even those are supposed to be discussed. For example, is there, uh, you know, there's a guy, a brother, who is gone to the university, is uh, 
now too much, let's chip in and see if we can take them to, you know, those are things that come. So they are to be discussed. You understand? Mm -hmm. I personally, in my life, I've had to live with my in-laws. I've had to live with my wife's siblings in my house. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's that age difference. And because even now, some of them call me dad. You get, because they came when they were young. Mm -hmm. You understand? What am I saying? I'm saying that marriage couples, sometimes situations happen. Her mom passed on. You know, single parent, she passed on. And I had to take, she had to take the responsibility. And me and I had to take the responsibility. So we schooled. You know, those kids that lived in my house, mm. like my own kids, mm. treated them like my own mm. kids. Yeah. Are you getting? Yeah, it, so was, it, it was in mutual consent. Yeah. By the way, did you even discuss it? <laughs> did we sit down and say, okay, no, no, no. You agreed? No, no, no. This is what happened. Mm. My wife went for the, for the, for the what you call morning, mm. the morning bambolesi, mm. where her, her mom was staying up country. Mm. She goes there for the week in preparation for the barrio. I joined her for the. I went, I think, a day. Then I came back. Then the last day, of the barrio. See, the, the barrio is over. Mm. Eh? So what I remember telling my wife, we're in this thing together. I think that that's was the, the communication. The that that is the that that is the that was a meeting. That was the bipartisan talks we had. <laughs> I just held her hand and say we are in this to, thing together. Yes. So the 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 the, the uh, first it was a girl because the boy was in school. So the the girl takes a uh, little earthly belongings. Yes. We get into the car. The yeah. car that we are we didn't have a car. Somebody had you know supported us and we drove to with them and as we are coming i'm coming home with my wife yes. and my wife has our small their daughter that is sharon sharon was very young you get mm -hmm. i think i think sharon couldn't even walk mm -hmm. very young so we have to come back but now w what happens here i think una you 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 are not like <laughs> Saying okay, yeah. before she gets into the car, let's mm. sit down under that tree. Mm. And no, you know, you just you 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 see, for example, if somebody is told, you know, dad is in the hospital, mm. something has happened, and you go to the hospital and you see, it tells you automatically there's got to be donations. Yes. Contributions, yeah. sorry. Yes. There will be do so that is what I did. I just say, hey, this one, mm. it's gonna be tough for my wife. So I mm. said we are gonna do we, we are together. We are together in this. The, the girl gets into, and of course the boy joined us mm, later. Mm. And then after, mm. the older boy, yes. the young man also mm. came. Mm. Are you getting? So, that is the nature of it. Yes. Some things that you just observe, mm. you know. Mm. That's why you need to, you yeah. don't go into relationships with your eyes closed. Yeah. I wanted Sometimes to you go like this and you observe. Yeah, sure. Uh, if you go for Russia and you find there is a half-built house, the father's house is half-built. We will have to do this someday. Yeah. So it, it, it tells you at yeah. some point cement yeah. we'll have to and be. roofing materials. <laughs> are you getting we'll it? need to be done. So yes. some of those things are, you know, but they are those you are calling disclosure. Yes. Are you getting And I think it's goodwill for somebody to disclose to the fiancé or fiancé. The mm. problem is that people keep things secret. Mm. And when they keep things secret, mm. when they get married, they continue to support in secret. So later, the husband or the wife gets to know, oh, this is what the husband is doing in secret. Oh, this is what the wife is doing in secret. So the marriage becomes a marriage of hide and seek. So you do your stuff, you do your stuff. I want in it. secret. Mm. Now, mm -hmm. what we do, me, I don't support my wife's uh, 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 family in secret. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. In fact, I give her money, tell her, go. Or we, if we've gone, we've driven together, I get, I said, let's go see, let's, let's leave them something. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. So I just go back to 3,000, 5,000, depending mm -hmm. on the need. Mm -hmm. She's seeing me do it. And they are seeing that I'm doing it in front of her. So it's not secret. Mm. Okay? When it comes to my side, because even 
my side of the family, there has been needs. There has been times that we have had to say, hey, my brother, my sister, whatever, you know, let's do this. It was not in secret. Sometimes, my wife, I, she goes down shopping, unga, what, 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 puts it in the car, and she is the one who drives mm. to where my dad lives. Yeah? After my mom died, my dad got married. So, that's my stepmom. So, she goes, unga, mchele, mafuta, what, what, what. Sometimes I'm not there. Pastor looks like the time is up, and I, I really wanted to get Pastor okay, Pauline's. Get up I really, the time is up. I really wanted to get Pastor Pauline's uh, uh, view on matters uh, in law support and measures to put in place because these are issues that are bedeviling families. Oh, yeah. Uh, I would say that uh, because you give you an example, uh, there has also to be the aspect of respect. Because I think that is what lacked in your situation. Yes. And uh, it was up to the sister. Mm. Because she's a she is the reason as to why the man came to your house. Mm. Without her, there would be no relationship. So it was up to her to sit down her brother mm. and tell her mm. a few things. Actually, she chased him away. I think ultimately the man had to leave, you know. So I believe there has to be the aspect of respect in the even as you're as you're supporting, there has to be respect and there has to be honor. Mm. And I don't think I would have much to add because Pastor mm. has talked about togetherness. Mm. Let, let never allow your family to think that they can come to you Secretly. and get support from you mm. without your wife's Kim, knowledge. Kim the day you open mm. that door, mm. it will become very hard for you to close it. So even if you have the money, mm. always tell them, allow me to talk to my wife. When you tell them that, mm. they will know that there's nothing that happens in this family mm -hmm. without conversation. We, uh, whatever is done between me and my wife, we do it in unity. Mm. So that also helps you as a family because no one will ever come to you from your family. Mm. Okay, no one will ever think that your wife is bad. Mm. So with time, actually, what happens is they find that your wife is usually the easier way. <laughs> the easier Upon way. Because you can't say no to the in law. <laughs> yeah, so they find that the wife yeah. becomes the easier way. Mm of getting to you now your people mm. they find that your wife becomes the easier way because mm. they have seen these ones mm. we cannot be able to separate them mm. we can never go to solomon mm. if you go to solomon he'll always tell us pastor he'll do, <laughs> you always tell them let me allow me to talk to my wife so let us go to the one he first has to talk to mm. to make things easier <laughs> to make things easier for us so i would say bottom line is that let both your families know mm -hmm. that there is nothing that we do individually, mm -hmm. that everything that we do, mm -hmm. we do it as a unit. Even in church, they've mm -hmm. got to know that I am operating one with my wife. Mm -hmm. and By the way, everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. Uh, By the way, let me tell you, it's also a mindset issue. It's a mindset. If you see yourself as one, mm -hmm. you will project that oneness. But if in your mind it has not loaded that you have become one, mm -hmm. that separation, that rift, that division, that mm -hmm. whatever chasm mm -hmm. that still exists will be projected. And you know, as she has said, if you show a crack, yeah, <laughs> there are people wider. who can make advantage, take advantage of that crack. Mm -hmm. So it's you to start to project that together, a show that you do things together. Very true. Are you getting? Wow. Yeah. That if, is wonderful. If, if, for example, my wife is going to her place and I'm not able to make it, she goes, and then if there's an envelope, she does not take the envelope and give and say, mina kuachia. No, she says, Pastor was not able to come, mm. but he has sent me with this. He has sent me with this message. Mm. Are you getting? Yes. Yeah. So now they know mm. that our daughter is here with the husband's knowledge blessing. Mm. And Pia, mm. the husband has sent her with something. Yes. 
And that is how, friends, let me tell you, that's how you kill this. But if you show that somebody can be coming to your office secretly, to that bank, lunch hour, at the reception, as he's coming, he's coming, is is parked a bicycle outside here wants to see you <laughs> are you getting is is come here he wants to see you and uh, you take him behind you go to the 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 canteen under the stairs mm. you have tea and then you go do this and mm. the wife doesn't know that muse will never come home muse will always be coming to your office that's where help is but the day you'll tell oh muse we come okay fanya hivi do this. Why, why don't we do this? I'm, I'm about to, uh, let me see if I can get one or two hours off. Mm, mm. We go home, you have lunch, mm, mm. you have tea, mm. we discuss with my wife. Wow. The next day, mm. the next time, mm. they'll come to your house. Mm. Are you getting, and I, I can tell you, I've walked around this city. Mm. There are so many offices you will go. You will see a woman with a chondo, or oh, Amze from up country has mm. gone to see the daughter or the son yeah, in the office without the husband. Because they want to the be alone. The easiest way is isolate. But if that person say, you know, I have to talk to mm. Baba Fulani, mm. I have to, to talk to my wife, mm. I have to talk to, they will be coming to the house. You're right. And number one, they first will tell you umejengwa, umekaliwa. Mm. So they will tell you first that your wife has sat on you. Mm. That is why you have, you cannot part with 2,000 without telling her. Mm. No, no, it's a system I don't want to build. <laughs> Are you getting it? Yes. It's, 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 it's not to being yeah. sat on. It's yeah. a system I don't mm. want to build. You get. Yeah. So, <laughs> anyway, most people want you to build their marriage the way they've built theirs. But it's up to you to decide this is the kind of marriage I want to enjoy. Mm. And you put the systems, the procedures. You get. Mm. Amen. I think we are done. Thank you, Pastor. Mm. Thank you so much. And God bless you. God bless you so much. Thank God you for bless. joining us today. It's been yeah. amazing. It's a thorny issue. It's a bit hard. <laughs> you know, because there are people who feel still attached. And it's good. Mm. Marriage doesn't bring disconnection with the loved ones and doesn't mean you should never help mm. but there are boundaries and there's a lot of wisdom to be used god bless you for joining us father in the name of jesus we are praying for those who are watching us if there are those two god that are going through uh, a, a sensitive patch as far as a relationship with the in-laws and family is concerned father i pray that you will help them give them the wisdom give them the insight show them how to handle the case in the name of Jesus Christ. It's your desire that the man should enjoy life with the wife of his youth. I pray that they enjoy their union, mm. they enjoy their marriage mm. in the name of Jesus Christ. We refuse for anyone to come and set asunder those that God has joined together. We pray that marriages will be healed and that people will enjoy marriages you intended in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you and we honor you. God bless you again for joining us. We have numbers there at the bottom of your screen. Let us know your opinion, your view. Of course, we have not covered everything. And maybe our views might not agree with yours. Your path view could be different. And that's okay. But the bottom line is, God wants you to enjoy your marriage. Identify where the problem is coming as far as your relationships with your in-laws are concerned. And see how you can iron it out. You know, uh, putting your head in the sand and ignoring it will not help. But deal with it, and the best way is to discuss it and talk about it, and God's going to help uh, you in Jesus' name. There's also a number there, the pay bill number. You know, in case you want to send an offering, a tithe, God's going to bless you in Jesus' name. Until next Thursday, this Pastor Morris, Pastor Solomon. Where and Pastor Pauline Gashero on Marito Bliss. Bliss. God bless you. See you next bless time. You. Oh, love is patient, love is kind, doesn't know evil. Love is strong, gives confidence, hope in hardest moments. 
Love protects, unifies, removes every fear. It's beautiful, does not contend. Cherish one another, never failing love. God ordained love, powerful love, eternal.